Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are going to open the fifth session and one of the best sessions today, the pediatric pancreatitis session. I am uh, one of the co-moderators. My name is Maisa Abuel Heja from Cincinnati Children's, and I have the honor to co-moderate the session with Andrea Parneski, my colleague and dear friend. And she will present the first talk on pediatric pancreatitis from the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group perspective. Thank you so much, Marissa. Uh, dear colleague, good afternoon. And uh, at, uh, so I feel honored that you are here with us to celebrate our uh, 10th birthday uh, in the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group. And uh, okay, so <laughs> I joined the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group. Uh, in, uh, 2013, and uh, uh, Natalia last week she encouraged me to uh, to do research on pediatric pancreatitis, and uh, at that time she was the only one who uh, were trained uh, uh, to to good care for uh, pediatric pancreatitis uh, patients as a pediatric gastroenterologist in Hungary. And uh, uh, with uh, the support of Peter and the uh, European Pancreatic Study Group Young Investigator Award, let me do a rotation in Leipzig with uh, Jonas Rosenbaum to learn uh, the uh, genetic techniques and learn more about uh, the genetic background of, uh, of uh, uh, pancreatitis. And uh, uh, also with the uh, help of uh, David Whitcomb and the Caper Award, uh, let me. Um, um, let me attend the meeting pancreas fast, and uh, that was uh, uh, the meeting when we have first met with my son, and uh, she invited me to uh, do an observership program in Cincinnati Children, Cincinnati Children's, and learn how to run a specific pediatric pancreatitis clinic and uh, how to collect clinical data from uh, pediatric patients suffering from pancreatitis. And I also have the opportunity to spend half a year with Miklos in Boston, also uh, learn uh, more about uh, the genetic background of pancreatitis. And uh, 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 as you have already heard, it, uh, 2015 was a busy year for us because that was the year when we uh, uh, came up with the Hungarian guideline, uh, guidelines about pancreatitis, and uh, this also covers the uh, the pediatric pancreatitis guideline in Hungary. And uh, we have uh, started uh, our two multicenter international observational clinical trials called pineapple and apple in this year. And uh, pineapple, uh, the, the rationale behind pineapple was that uh, there is an increasing risk uh, in the past years uh, in uh, pediatric pancreatitis and uh, this incidence increasing uh, east to west. And uh, more, uh, more than, uh, Veronique Bill presented elegantly that there is a, a, co a strong correlation between the amylase and lactase measurements and the incidence. But uh, there is no available guidance uh, on the necessity of uh, amylase and lactase measurements in pediatric age groups. So uh, with, the, uh, with an international collaboration, we collected around uh, 50,000 data and uh, analyzing it uh, 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 according to uh, the clinical practice, how we diagnose pediatric pancreatitis as a reason behind abdominal pain. And uh, here you can see in our data set that uh, uh, we also find a strong correlation between the amylase and lipase measurement and the incidence of acute pancreatitis. And uh, in the prospective part of the study, uh, we collected uh, patients uh, with abdominal pain and performed the abdominal ultrasonography and the amylase and lipase measurements as steps to diagnose acute pancreatitis in pediatric patients. And we uh, found uh, 10 times more patients with, uh, with a more accurate diagnostic practice. So uh, the, the current practice is insufficient, uh, but uh, subjecting all children uh, to laboratory testing and uh, abdominal ultrasonography is unnecessary. Uh, we have to figure out uh, how to find uh, those kids who, uh, who, who 
who needs to do the breakup for uh, acute pancreatitis. So we need a clinical scoring system. And uh, uh, these are the preliminary parts of the, uh, uh, of the prospective parts of the final post study. And uh, the descriptive data set shows us that there is uh, a significant difference between the AP and the non-AP group in the pancreatic family uh, uh, anamnesis and uh, a dietary habit and also in the uh, weight loss. And uh, there is... Uh, um, um, there is differences in the location of the abdominal pain, obviously, and uh, uh, in the duration of uh, the, uh, the abdominal pain. So now this uh, study in the phase of the machine learning part, uh, when we enrich uh, um, the uh, data what we have, and uh, then we will see, uh, hopefully, or I'm sure that uh, a kind of score system uh, will come up soon. Uh, and the other study is the Apple, which is uh, uh, which has two parts. Uh, one is focusing on the uh, on those patients who has history with pancreatitis, and uh, it's uh, the aim of to specify the genetic background of these patients and also understand more about the family history in these uh, kids. And the prospective part of the Apple uh, focusing on uh, newly diagnosed uh, patients with pancreatitis. And the aim of the study is to get more details and recognize the better course of the disease and also identify early risk factors and uh, establish a pediatric specific uh, on admission severity uh, index. And uh, again, uh, this is uh, the um, data set for the uh, retrospective part. So we have already collected uh, 261 patients and divided into acute, acute recurrent and chronic pancreatitis group. And what you can see here, uh, it's um, not surprisingly uh, the um, chronic pancreatitis group, they are older, significantly older, and at the time of the first effect, uh, attack uh, was uh, significantly uh, earlier than uh, the, the, the time duration between uh, the chronic pancreatitis and the first attack uh, was significantly longer than the other groups, and uh, they have uh, 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 more family uh, history in the acute recurrent uh, pancreatitis group. Uh, here you can see the distribution of the risk factors. And uh, we have uh, found that uh, in the acute pancreatitis group, there is multiple risk factors uh, in, in, in one third of the patients. And uh, these are the first steps of the genetic uh, analysis. And I would like to stop for uh, saying a big thank to Miklos and Varaj uh, to help us to do uh, also the analysis and also the interpretation of the data. Uh, and uh, this is really the early results, and we calculated the cumulative risk, uh, the cumulative genetic risk, and it's not surprisingly, uh, this is the highest in the uh, chronic pancreatitis group. And this one diagram shows the uh, overlaps between uh, the, uh, the genetic uh, predisposing factors. Uh, this uh, table represents the prospectively collected data set. And we have uh, a bit more than 100 kids uh, divided into mild uh, acute pancreatitis group and moderate and severe together. So majority of the kids, they have uh, mild acute pancreatitis. Uh, we uh, didn't find any significant difference between uh, these groups according to the uh, medical history data. And we compared the therapeutic uh, aspects of uh, mild uh, pancreatitis and moderate severe pancreatitis groups. And it's also not surprising that there is a significant difference between the enteral feeding antibiotic usage and uh, the intensive care. Uh, and uh, uh, also, we, um, we analyzed that uh, if, uh, if the so if our colleague uh, uh, were adhered to the guideline, uh, 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 it uh, resulted in better clinical outcomes. So those kids who were neither uh, 
get the uh, uh, fluid replacement uh, nor the enteral feeding. Uh, they had severe disease course and also they spent uh, more significantly longer in uh, the hospital. And uh, uh, moving uh, on the time scale, uh, and uh, uh, I think Peter and Andrea also mentioned that in 2017, we have the European Pancreatic Group meeting uh, in Budapest. And that time well, we uh, came up with the European Pancreatic Club and the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group Evidence-Based Guideline for Management of Pediatric Pancreatitis. It was a quite long discussion. <laughs> Uh, but I think uh, well, we um, uh, we came up with a good paper and it's really useful uh, in the clinical setting. And we covered uh, 15 topics and uh, 20 statements were based on adult literature, which uh, which brings uh, bring us uh, the desire to do more clinical research in pediatric pancreatitis. Uh, uh, in the next year, uh, we published the first meta-analysis on uh, pediatric pancreatitis, and the result uh, uh, was that the early enteral feeding associated with uh, um, um, shorter uh, length of hospitalization. And uh, you can see here that the only available uh, clinical data set uh, coming from Cincinnati Children highlights that uh, the good quality research they do there. Um, and uh, in uh, 2020, uh, we widen our focus uh, with the cystic fibrosis related pancreatic uh, research and you will uh, hear, you will hear a presentation about the um, about our early results uh, tomorrow by Adrian Kerry in the CF session. And uh, uh, a year later, uh, we won to uh, France. So this is the first time in Hungary when um, uh, purely pediatric pancreatitis uh, based uh, grant uh, were given. So um, we can uh, we can move forward with our clinical studies. And uh, this year, we uh, start uh, the follow-up study for the uh, Apple patients, and that's uh, also for those ones who were uh, in the Apple study, and it's open for those ones who are uh, now in ongoing pancreatitis. And uh, we, um, we collect the medical uh, data as well, and uh, we are focusing on uh, the, um, during the follow-up visits, uh, for the um, uh, com uh, later complication of uh, acute uh, effects, also uh, including the oral glucose tolerance test to uh, measure the endocrine dysfunction. And uh, what uh, we were doing uh, uh, during this year, it was uh, learning by doing clinical sciences. So we have contributed in more than uh, 50 articles, uh, and we have. Uh, get uh, quite good knowledge from our adult colleagues uh, and uh, we contributed also in uh, those uh, studies and those clinical work uh, which uh, covered uh, adult patients. And uh, now we have a quite big group, I think. Uh, well, during these years, we have 12 student researchers and uh, we have uh, seven PhD student, you have already heard uh, Felix, uh, he presented the effort uh, trial. Uh, you will hear Rita tomorrow and also Adrian. And uh, referring to uh, the, the quote from uh, Fuller, uh, Fuller uh, I uh, think in Hungary, uh, we built up a new system uh, called the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group. And I would like to thank all of you to help us to build something uh, new. And uh, thank you for collaborating with us. And thank you for your attention. Thanks for the presentation, Andrea. And thank you and congratulations to you and Peter on hosting great meetings so far. You kept it up. And definitely, Andrea's story is inspiring to many leaders so for all the PhD students, Peter and Andrew are great examples um, and leaders to learn from.
we can take maybe a couple of questions. Okay, thank you for uh, congratulations first on behalf of the Hungarian Freshman Study Group. Thank you for joining in 2017 because I think uh, you are a very good uh, host of the pediatric group here and uh, you did a uh, really uh, fantastic achievement, uh, not only in Hungary, but I think in Central and Eastern Europe as well. Of course, I saw the data many, many times, but no, I just picked up what I haven't picked up so far. Is actually the, I was surprised concerning the low, relatively low for the BMI for these pancreatitis patients. It was around, it was around 19 or 20 or whatsoever, or 21 about the BMI of the kids. And as I look at maybe this is a pediatric phenomenon, but uh, uh, it means that uh, it's still they they are not as they don't have, they don't hit by obesity as much as like the adults because if I look at the adult pediatric population, it's almost everybody's uh, BMI is around 30. So for me, it was a little bit just surprising. I haven't realized it before. Uh, I think there is an issue with BMI in, in the pediatric population because you uh, you counted like uh, so you divided with the near and square and uh, you know what kids are small uh, so we have to normalize the BMI data to z scores and uh, I think that will show us the the real meaning of the BMI but you are right uh, and uh, I think there is a huge difference between the, the US kids and the U European kids. Uh, and uh, yes, we have obese ones, but uh, not as many as I think you have. Yeah, up to 30 for some kids who have been growing terribly. But we go by BMI percentile for age and then adjusted for sex. So for the female, when they were younger. So it's need further analysis. But thank you for pointing that. Any other comments? Okay, thank 